All right, what I'd like to do right now is work through two problems that deal with thin film interference. Okay, now these are dealing with the wave properties of light. We're going to kind of step through each one. These are similar to the types of problems that you may see components of in some type of free response question. You probably won't see an AP free response question that's entirely thin film, but you might find one that part of it is treated as a thin film. And so that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to go through and work practice problem number four and practice problem number six from the packet. Okay, the others I've posted answers to, but I'm not going to make videos for just these because these seem to be the more important ones. Okay, so practice problem number four. We've got a thin soap film, okay, which is formed by dipping a plastic rectangular wand into a solution of soapy water, which has a reflective index of 1.4. In daylight, you can see blue light of wavelength 475 nanometers coming from one section of the film. Estimate the minimum section of thickness of the film at that sp specific place. Okay, so part A, using the numbers, numbering scheme from the lesson, will ray 2 be in phase or out of phase with, with ray 1? Well, since we're going from a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction, that means that when it reflects right here, 1 and 2 are going to be out of phase. Okay? So out of phase, because at that <coughs> solid place there, there it's going to be like the wave bouncing off of a wall where you're going to get the inversion. So it'll be 180 degrees or half of a wavelength off. Okay? Letter B. Using the same numbering scheme, will ray 5 be in phase or out of phase with ray 1? Okay, so again... Let's see, ray 1 comes in, it refracts, so no phase change there. Right here we do have a reflection, but it's with a low index of refraction. And since it's a low index of refraction there, that means there will not be a phase change. So it reflects, refracts again, and so 5 will be in phase with ray 1. Okay, essentially that means since 5 and 1 are in phase, 5 and 2 will be out of phase just by looking at the phases, okay, without looking at the uh, actual distance traveled, just by looking at the inversions there, okay. Letter C asks for what is psi, the net phase inversion for this series of refre reflections. So, it, understand that this question, net phase inversion, would probably not be asked on the AP exam. However, you need to understand that between the in phase 5 and the out of phase 2, uh, the net phase inversion or the amount of difference due to the inversion is half of a wavelength, okay, between 5 and 2. All right, now letter D, to see blue, are you going to use the formula for constructive or destructive interference? And the answer to that question is constructive because we want the, the specific frequencies and wavelengths of the blue light to build up, and that's why we're seeing it. The other colors of light, we're going to have either destructively interfere completely or partially so that they're not as strong as the blue. In order to see the blue, we have to have that constructive interference of blue and blue and blue, so that's the bright phase. That's the thing that we see. Okay, so question E, what expression will represent the EPD in this problem? Now remember, EPD is the equivalent extra or equivalent path difference. Okay, now this has to take into consideration two things. The EPD has to take into consideration the extra distance traveled. So it goes through the thickness once and through the thickness again, 5 does. And so it has to go double the thickness of the film. We're assuming it goes straight down and straight back. And then it also is going to be half a wavelength out of phase, which is what we mentioned before. So plus half of the wavelength. All right? So <clears throat> next we have letter F. So an average blue wavelength is 475 nanometers in air. What is its wavelength in the soap film? Well, we know the index of refraction. An index of refraction is the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. Speed of light in a vacuum would be the frequency of the light in the vacuum times the wavelength 
wavelength of the, the light in the vacuum. Same thing here, frequency of the speed in the glass, of the wave in the glass times the wavelength of the light in the glass. The frequencies do not change, right? We've talked about before that the frequencies has to have to stay the same. So therefore, the index of refraction is going to equal the wavelength in, this, in, in a vacuum divided by the wavelength in the glass. And so we can then solve for that by saying, OK, we need the wavelength of the vacuum divided by the index of refraction that will give us the wavelength in the glass. So the wavelength in the vacuum is 475 nanometers. We'll divide by 1.4, which will be 339. So the wavelength in the glass is 339 nanometers. All right, and the last part, G, write the equation for the thin film interference as it applies to this problem and determine the minimum non-zero thickness of the film. Okay, well, if we want constructive interference, then we need the extra path distance, right, or the equivalent distance based on whether there's this phase change or not. Extra path distance needs to be equal to wavelength, the wavelength, right, to get constructive interference, or a multiple of the wavelength. Now, since it's asking for the minimum, then I'm going to put 1 in for m. And so that means that we need 2t plus half of the wavelength equal to 1 wavelength, right? And so therefore, I'm going to subtract the half of wavelength. I'm going to get 2 times t equals half of the wavelength. Divide both sides by 2. So the thickness is going to be a quarter of the wavelength. Since the wavelength is 339, we'll just divide that by 4, and the thickness is then a 4.8, or approximately 85 nanometers. Okay? So there you go. That is example number 4. All right, let's go on. Let's look at practice problem number 6. So I'm going to go on down to the next page. Here we go. This one is a similar type question. But again, I want us to talk through. This is a lot more similar to what you would see on the AP exam. So I want us to kind of reason through, look at how we would figure this out. Okay. So we have a soap film, which has an index of refraction of 1.33. It gives us the thickness, so 375 nanometers, and then has a flat piece of glass on the bottom. So you've got air up here, glass on the bottom, soap in between. And then it gives us the index of refraction for glass is 1.52. Index of refraction in the air is approximately 1. And the soap is 1.33. And uh, it's asking about sunlight, uh, w whose wavelengths go from about 380 to 750. All right, nanometers, and what colors will we end up seeing? What, what, uh, which wavelengths will give us the constructive interference? Essentially, what are the colors that are going to reflect that we'll actually get to see? All right, so let's go ahead and work through this piece by piece, and we'll figure it out. And then I'll work that out. All right, so what we'll do first is we'll look at rays 1 and 2. We'll figure out the extra path difference there and find out how those are going to be different. Okay, so first let's look at ray 1. It comes in. It goes from the air to the soap. So since the soap has a high index of refraction and this has a low index of refraction, that means that when it rebounds, it'll be off by half a wavelength. Okay, so one will be out of phase because of its inversion. Now, if it refracts, it doesn't have a phase inversion yet, but now it's going to reflect off the glass. Now, that's going from high to higher, which means that this one's going to have a phase inversion as well before it bounces off. When it refracts, it won't have another one. So this one as well is going to be half of a wavelength off. Now, that means with respect to each other, they're already in phase. The only thing that's going to determine the extra path distance this time, EPD, is that thickness right there, or 2 times t, right? Which in this case we know is 375 nanometers, so 750 nanometers would be 
2 times t. Okay. Now, EPD is not something that AP will probably recognize, but as long as you're showing that you understand that the wave has to travel down and back, then they'll get the idea of what you're working with. That's the thing that you have to show, and so I would write this out, that the extra path distance equals 2t equals 750 nanometers. Now, what we want is for the constructive interference to occur. Right? So how are we going to get constructive interference? Well, we're going to get constructive interference if that 750 nanometers is equal to either the wavelength or an integer times the wavelength. Right? Now, it's important to recognize that this wavelength has to be the wavelength in the soap. Right? That's where it's traveling. And so that's the thin film, and that's the wavelength that we need. So similarly, we're going to have to say, if you remember from the first problem, the index of refraction equals the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the wavelength in your second material, which in this case is soap. And so I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. And so we're going to take the wavelength, which we don't actually know what that is. So we're just going to rewrite this as the wavelength in the soap is equal to the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction. All right, so that will be the wavelength in soap. So we'll go ahead and rewrite that. So we've got 750 nanometers now, which has to be equal to some integer times the wavelength in a vacuum divided by the index of refraction, which is 1.33. So, if we then solve that, let's multiply 750 times 1.33. So, 750 times 1.33, and we get 997.5, so about 998 nanometers is equal to some integer or zero times the wavelength in a vacuum. And so now we just plug in different numbers for m to find out which wavelength will work. Right? Essentially, what this is showing is that this wave can either go through a full wavelength, right, one wavelength, or it can go through two, right, that's what the integer two would be, because it would go through two wavelengths in this distance, it can go through three wavelengths in this distance, as long as in this extra path distance it's going through a full number of wavelengths, then we're going to end up getting constructive interference. So let's go ahead and try it out. If I put a one in, 998 divided by 1 then means that the wavelength in a vacuum could be 998. Okay, if I put 2 in, that would be 998 divided by 2, which would be 499. If I do 3, that would be 998 divided by 3, which is 333. Okay, and I could keep going, but I recognize that the first one was already too big, right, outside of the range that we wanted, so that's no good. That's up in the ultraviolet, or sorry, that would be an infrared, longer wave. And then 4999 will fit. Uh, that's kind of a greenish color in the about 500 nanometers. And then 333 is down below the 380, and so that's up in the ultraviolet range. And so that one won't be part of this either. So it's just going to be the 499 nanometers. So you've seen two different examples, one where we have to have an extra one-half wavelength due to the phase inversions and one where we don't. Hopefully that's helpful. The end.